Spotlight. This is Akash Vani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an exclusive interview with ISRO chairperson Dr. V Narayanan on the National Space Day. Interviewer is Diksha Saxena, Akash Vani correspondent. 23rd August, a very proud day for every Indian. This is the day when we celebrate the National Space Day. Today, we sit down with Dr. V Narayanan, the distinguished chairman of the Indian Space Research Organisation ISRO. Dr. Narayanan, welcome to Akashwani News. Thank you. As all of you are aware, 23rd August 2023 was a historical day for all the Indians across the globe. It was that day our Chandrayaan 3, which was rotating with a velocity of 6,077 km per hour, soft landed near the south pole of moon and India becoming the only country and first country soft landed near south pole of moon. It was the great visionary leader, our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, declared the spot where we soft landed as Sivasakti Point. Also gave a guideline and declared that day to be celebrated as the National Space Day. Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla, he returned. How do you look at this big achievement of Group Captain Shukla? And it is not just his achievement, it is the entire country's achievement. First of all, we have to thank Honorable Prime Minister of India. He is the person who announced the Gaganyan program on 15th August 2018. And Gaganyan program is the one wherein using our own rocket, we have to send our brothers or sisters to space and bring them back safely. And we selected four Gaganyatris, basically from Air Force, and now they are part of ISRO. We gave them training in Russia and also we gave them internal training. And then Honorable Prime Minister in 2023, when he visited USA, along with the President, then President of USA, he decided to send one of the Gaganyatris to International Space Station. And he strongly believed that being a human space flight Gaganyan program, this will bring lot of knowledge and confidence to the system. Thereby, two of the Gaganyatris were given 10 months training in USA and Sukhlaji was finally sent to space and he is the second Indian to go to space and first Indian to go to International Space Station. Now, we have brought him back safely and the entire contract was executed by ISRO team and we also had a great role to play in ensuring safety of them. So, really, we feel we are second to none in identifying this type of issues and ensuring safety of the astronaut. In fact, today, the entire world is pricing us for this great contribution. And Sukhlaji, when he has gone and come back, there are a lot of data we are getting. Number one, they are trained and exposure. Second thing is, they have worked with the experienced team and he could carry out seven experiments in the space biological experiments, seven experiments were successfully done and then the exposure in the microgravity conditions and now he has come back. Major advantage is once you go and come back, you have a lot of confidence. To be frank, 35 years back, first time when I went by flight, aeroplane and came back, I am from a village. There are a lot of my friends came and asked, how was the flight, how did you, this one, is it safe, unsafe? But today, every time we are going and same case, when first time we are going to send our own Gaganyatris in our rocket, there will be a lot of tension, a lot of anxieties. But this exposure gives a lot of confidence lot of understanding. And first of all, I want to tell the viewers, this travel is not a major program for us. Our major program is Gaganyan program. And this experience will feed the data for that program. Not only that, this exposure will, because now our human space flight program, lot of things we are going to do. We are going to build a space mm -hmm. station mm -hmm. based on the direction by Honorable Prime Minister. Also, we are, Honorable Prime Minister has, has given a guideline to study and build a rocket to take Indians to moon mm -hmm. and land safely and bring back safely mm -hmm. by 2040. So, this human space flight program is going to continue and this entire exposure of uh, Sukla Ji, who is a ISRO employee today, he is my colleague, he is going to feed lot of data for our Gaganyan program. Now, I would like to draw your attention to something which you have already spoken about, Gaganyan. ISRO is preparing its maiden unmanned test flight for the Gaganyan human space mission this year itself in December. Could you tell us what are the objectives and challenges involved in this plan? See, when you talk about the Gaganyan program, lot of new developments had to be done. Number one, a human rated launch vehicle development. Human rated in a layman language, if I tell, increasing the margin of the vehicle, 
with improving the redundancies, thereby improving the reliability of the vehicle. So, we have completed the development. Second thing is a orbital module in which human being will fly that module development. Third thing is when during the travel any problem happens to the rocket, we have to save the crew. So a crew escape system development. Another thing is when you send them to the space, externally there is deep vacuum, there is lot of temperature generation when the rocket goes with high speed as well as re-entry time. So all thermal protection system, all the development. And we have to maintain relative humidity, pressure, temperature, oxygen content, CO2 level, everything has to be maintained. So we call it as environmental control and safety system development. Then the rocket takes the entire module to 170 km along with the Gaganyatri. From there, we have to take them to 400 kilometers and maintain them safely using orbital propulsion systems. And after that, we have to bring back by the propulsion system. And last phase, they will be landing using parachute. The parachute development is done by DRDO lab in Agra. So it is a huge technology. So now we have to demonstrate. We have completed the design, ground tests are done, and the vehicle characterization itself, atmospheric region that flying character Registration itself has to be demonstrated and whatever experiments we have done and everything has to be demonstrated. So we are going step by step and the first step we are having a in fact unpressurized module only mainly to do the vehicle characterization and the end to end mission demonstration and we are having the first uncrewed mission this year December where instead of human being there will be a half humanoid which is going to fly. It does lot of activities whatever human being is supposed to do and followed by we are scheduled we have planned two uncrewed missions identical to the crewed mission except the human being everything will be identical the first mission is a truncated version and once those two next year we are planning once we succeed after reviewing the result 2027 first quarter we are planning the actual crewed mission by the time our knowledge level will go up our experience will go up our conference level will go up that's what is planned now isro's 100th rocket launch was completed on 29th january this year what does this milestone mean for ISRO and for India's space sector? Say, till 1979, we were not having rocket technology demonstrated. Rocket means launch vehicle technology. 1979, we had the first launch vehicle mission. And unfortunately, it was a partial success. We could not accomplish the mission. 1980, second mission was a grand successful mission. Project director was none other than APJ Abdul Kalam Ji. And then chairman, a great person, great son of the soil, Sadish Tawan. And, you know, it is a teamwork. And that team accomplished that. Now, when it comes to the milestones, this year we had the 100th mission. And I took over as the chairman on 13th January. And this launch was on 29th. And we were very particular to get success. And success is by only smart work and hard work. But then lot of review took place, everything, and we ensured it was a grand successful mission. And 100th is a major milestone, you know. So we are written today in the golden letters in Indian history. The 100th launch vehicle mission was a grand successful mission. Your answer brought me to my next question. So Nisar was developed in partnership with the US and is reportedly world's costliest earth observation satellite. Does such international collaboration help cement India's growth in stature in international space arena? So NISR satellite, I would like to tell a couple of points. Number one, one of the payloads called L-band SAR payload was realized by USA, JPL USA. And a 12 meter unfurlable antenna was realized by them. And we realized a equivalent payload called S-band SAR payload. And the entire satellite was built by India. Only payload, one of the payload came from them. The full satellite bus was developed by developed and realized by India. And it was Indian rocket, the Mark II rocket, which placed the satellite successfully in the orbit. Actually, it is not that we both worked together and realized the satellite and launched. India's role in that mission is huge role. Building a satellite, making our own launcher and successfully placing the satellite, it is a huge contribution. And I am so proud to be an Indian and a yes, Israel person. Say, 1963, November 21st, we launched the first tiny rocket. And that rocket was donated by America. And 1975, August 1st, we demonstrated mass communication through 2400 television sets. And satellite signal was given by America. To be frank, in my assessment at that point of time, we were 60 years behind any developed spacefaring countries. Today, we are in par with other spacefaring nations, rubbing shoulder to shoulder with the USA in accomplishing Axiom mission, ensuring even by stopping the launch, ensuring safety of the astronaut, one mission we have done. 
second mission nsr mission successfully you have done and third mission within 3 months a commercial mission a 6500 kg us communication satellite is going to be launched from indian soil using indian rock so it's a great proud moment you know when you started your business 60 years behind today you are shoulder to shoulder rubbing with the developed countries and they also appreciate and understand and everything has come because of smart work hard work dedicated single minded devotion i think lot of people have contributed so it is not one or two people not only chairman isro or directors of the center it's the entire team and along with us some 400 industrial partners from india they are supporting our program more than 300 academic institutes are supporting and i think india has become a very vibrant space faring nation i am so proud of a indian proud to be a isro person i would like to understand from you how is in space helping in integrating private sector innovation in the indian space ecosystem see here also first the credit should go to honorable prime minister of india narendra modi why i am telling it was he who brought the space sector reform the space sector reform is very simple earlier the entire space activity was done by isro and we need lot of work to be done so he opened up the space sector thereby private companies startup companies academia they can work on the space ecosystem and isro will handhold them handholding means i will tell you suppose somebody is to launch a rocket we need launch pad you need test stand they need not build we are going to support them so it is he who brought and the in space system was formed Today I am very happy to report to this August audience or viewers. Almost 10 years back we had one or two startup companies. Today we are having 300 plus startup companies, and there are two startup companies. They have already done suborbital missions, and there are companies who are using satellite data and converting to useful product and helping the nation in a big way. There are companies, startup companies. You can see a lot of exhibits we have put. There are companies who are making mini satellites, and the space ecosystem has really grown. And in space. in space is part of department of space mm. it is with me this part of department of space like isro in space is for authorization and as secretary i am so happy whatever in space is doing and right now in fact prime minister also should be very happy that the space ecosystem in the country is growing and it will further grow lastly dr narayanan on the occasion of national space day today is there any message that you would like to convey to our listeners i would like to communicate two points Number one, this country. When we got independence, we had a stature. Today we have come a long way. This country, the Bharat, will become a developed country before we celebrate hundred years of independence. And Honorable Prime Minister is fully working towards that, and we all are supporting him. And I don't have any doubt on this point. It will become a developed country. And the message to the younger generation is: you should see how to contribute to make this country as a developed country. Second thing is, one should grow as a good human being. that is very very important studies are important hard work and smart work is important but very important thing is one should grow as a good human being at the end of the day that is what is required and you have got lot of opportunity in bharat our country is a great country and you have got outstanding open opportunities so please contribute to make our country as a developed country before we celebrate 100 years of independence You gave such deep insights on India's space sector and the way we have been progressing, and you have also shown us the vision for next till 2047. Thank you so much, Dr. Narayanan, for sparing your valuable time and speaking to Akashvani News today. Thank you. You were listening to an exclusive interview with ISRO chairperson Dr. V Narayanan on the National Space Day. Interviewer was Diksha Saxena, Akashvani correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsttalks@gmail.com or WhatsApp on 92890940. Spotlight. 